people, we've all heard heartbreaking stories of domestic abuse and the devastating, sometimes deadly impact it can have on families. Taking a look at the statistics puts the problem into perspective even more. Domestic violence is a leading cause of injury to women in the U.S. ages 15 to 44. That's more than car accidents, muggings, and rapes combined. Children who witness domestic violence without intervention can suffer the effects their entire lives. And the National Coalition of Domestic Violence reports domestic violence is a leading cause of death in pregnant women. And it doesn't seem to be getting any better. In fact, a survey shows cash concerns are making abusers even more violent. Well, today we're going to share with you the story of what one woman is doing to help. I never really thought I was in a domestic violence situation till he pushed me into the wall and I went into labor and I had my son. On the when she finally did escape. No money in the bank. He basically cleared everything and left. In a 2012 survey, 70% of women said financial issues were factors in their abuse. 75% admit staying in their violent relationships longer because of the economy. The financial ramifications are huge. Web of Benefit so founder Johanna Crawford is helping survivors get back on their financial feet. I'd like to have help with budgeting and rental issues. Offering $500 grants to help them with things like rental deposits or laptops for job searches and online classes. When they succeed at the first step, which is what we help them with, then they know they can do the rest. In the last eight years, 1,200 women have received more than $650,000 thanks to Web of Benefit. Rebecca is one of them. And there's hope that I can start anew. Johanna says many women don't realize they can get help before they leave an abuser. She recommends victims get an advocate while they're still in a violent relationship and work on an exit plan. I would not leave the house until you knew you had a bed. Rebecca and her kids are now safe and financially sound. As part of her grant, she vowed to volunteer her time to other survivors. I helped someone because I was helped, and that's the least I can do is to help another human being. And Johanna also says, if possible, before you leave an abuser, gather financial information and important documents for you and your children, like birth certificates. And if you or maybe a loved one is dealing with abuse, one of the most important things for you to know, as we just heard, is that help is available right here on Delmarva. So joining us today to tell us more is Janelle Hale, who's the Director of Legal and Advocacy Programs with the Life Crisis Center in Salisbury. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Yeah, thank you. We talked about the number of women who are returning to their abusers, mm -hmm. and, and there's a financial connection. And sometimes women feel like they don't have any other choice? Yeah, finances are a very real problem. In many situations, the victim in the relationship isn't allowed to have a job, and they may have no knowledge of the family's finances or access to a bank account. Wow. Now, we keep talking about women, but really, mm -hmm. uh, anyone can be abused, men, women, children? Yes, both men and women can be victims of a domestic violence, whether it's a heterosexual relationship or a same-sex relationship. And where there's domestic violence, there's often child abuse, too. And it's not always just physical. Right. It can be psychological as well. That's right. A lot of times the relationship doesn't start off with physical abuse. It may start with verbal abuse, and that is just as damaging. Women will talk about it as a verbal battering. They feel like they've been beaten with the words. And many would say, I would rather he just hit me than to verbally yeah. abuse me. The physical wounds heal much quicker than the verbal psychological wounds. Mm -hmm. Is it sometimes easy to just, I guess, overlook abusive situations? It is. Abusive situations occur behind closed doors in privacy of the home. It's hard to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. So, and, sorry, no, go ahead, go ahead. It's also hard for women or men to admit to the abuse that they're enduring. They often minimize or deny what's going on. So, is there anything that we can watch for, any clues that we can watch for that may indicate abuse? Yes, you can watch for changes in a person's behavior such as isolation or major changes in personality such as becoming withdrawn. Um, you can see anxiousness to please a partner or frequent injuries such as bruises in various stages of healing. Okay, so if we see some of these signs, what should we do? Talk to the person. Let them know that you're concerned about their safety and that there are people that can help them. Let them know that if they're in danger, they should call the police, that if they need someone to talk to to help them plan, that life crisis is available. So it's important to know that there is help available mm -hmm. and, and that is available 
right here right. on Delmarva. So uh, have you got a, a, a number? Yes. The hotline is available 24 hours a day, and that's 410-749-HELP. Okay. Now, it's also important for victims to take steps to make sure they're not being monitored, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, and they can do that by changing their internet passwords and usernames, making sure they're using a safe computer, and by getting their own cell phone or using a pay phone or a trusted friend or neighbor's phone. All righty, Janelle, thank you so much for extremely valuable mm -hmm. information. appreciate you coming well, in this thank afternoon. You. Thank you. And if you would like more information on how you can help yourself or a loved one, or if you just need someone to talk to, go to DelmarvaLife.com and click on the Show tab. Still to come on Delmarva Life, when was the last time you had a good night's sleep? Well, there are so many factors that can affect your rest, from your weight to the temperature of your room. We separate fact from fiction next. But hey, maybe it's your bad back that's keeping you up. Dr. Oz has more on how to fix that. Hi, I'm Dr. Oz. A bad back can cause endless tossing and turning, robbing you of a good night's sleep. If you suffer lower back pain, try lying on one side with a pillow between your knees. If your neck and upper back cause you grief, try using a sleep posture pillow with a depression in its center to ease those parts of your body. 